Okay, so so there was a question from one of your uh, classmates saying how many more lectures are uh, going to be there in this uh, course. Um, I plan to finish by the end of next week. Um, I've been going a little bit slow because of the interface, this uh, sort of uh, remote uh, teaching. Um, but I'll, whatever we finish by the end of next week is uh, uh, what you will have uh, for the course. And in my mind, uh, the rest of the lectures are going to be most of uh, mostly applications of Prolog. You might find interesting um, ways to use Prolog. Um, but it's it's not going to introduce very difficult concepts, right? So that's that's the way I see the rest of uh, the lectures. That said, we'll continue, right? So we'll see how far uh, we make it today. Okay, so yesterday we were looking at um, the um, queue implementations using open lists, right? And we played around with queues a little bit, and we the enter and leave procedures, which is uh, push and pop for queues, the clauses are written this way, right? So they are, um, if A enters this queue, then you end up with this other queue, um, where uh, Y happens to be uh, A of Z, right? So that uh, so that we um, remove an element from the suffix. And similarly for leave, uh, leave is uh, more simpler. It says, uh, take the first element out and you get Y. So if you sort of stare at this, uh, um, Loss a little bit, right? So we introduce a variable x and y here, which are uh, going to be just a unification of uh, existing variables in the um, head of the rule. In particular, there are no existential variables, right? So whenever you have a um, um, a rule where you don't have existential variables, you can always reduce it to a fact. Modulo other details, but uh, this is uh, this is certainly uh, um, possible in this particular example. The idea is that you see a y here, right? And y is uh, going to be a list with uh, a as the head and z as the tail, and both a and z are here. So you can you don't need to write this as a uh, rule. You can actually write this as a fact by replacing the occurrence of y with uh, um, a bar z. If you do that, you get this uh, fact, which is enter. And similarly, you can do the same for uh, uh, leave, right? So where uh, x equals uh, x is unified with uh, a bar y. So you can replace x with uh, a bar y in the definition. So you get one less variable, one more, uh, one less thing to um, consider. So this makes for uh, uh, better programs, right? Shorter programs are not always necessarily uh, good to read. But in this case, uh, it certainly works out. Um, anyway, so I thought I would mention this uh, on the side. So let's uh, continue. So the next thing that we are going to look at is uh, what are known as uh, difference lists. So this is a very common concept. This is not particular to Prolog. Um, but we will see an instantiation of difference lists in uh, Prolog. OK, so what's the motivation for difference lists? We've seen ordinary lists before, right? And we've, we've also had an append function for uh, regular lists. Um, if you append an empty list to a queue, list queue, you get queue. If you append a list with head h and tail p with some queue, you get a head h tail r list. If you can show that uh, um, if you append p and q, you get r, right? Um, the thing to notice here is that uh, this implementation is uh, O of n operation, right? Every time you are uh, you are going to uh, append a list, you need to take one head off of the first list, and then call the recursive one, and then put it back together here, right? And uh, this is O of n on the um, length of the first list, right? And the question is, okay, th so this is this is fine, um, but can we actually get uh, O of one list, right? Um, how would you get a O of one list if you had a, say, a linked list in C? If you always remember the head and the tail, right? And uh, if you want to append two lists, you just take the last node and update its next pointer to the first node of the second list, right? And that is a constant time operation. We will try to do something very similar here, right? But uh, because we can't modify um, the um, 
the next pointer, we will sort of simulate it using um, the idea of uh, open lists, right? So the idea is going to be very similar to what we saw with queues, but we are going to do it for different lists. Okay, so let's let's slowly uh, develop a solution towards a difference list. Consider that you are given two lists, right? L1 is one, two, three, L2 is four, five, six. And uh, the result of appending them is X. Uh, if the result of appending them is X, then you can write uh, append L1, L2, X, right? Where L1 is one, two, three, um, empty list for the tail, right? And uh, L2 is four, five, six, empty list for the tail. So this is what uh, regular lists give you. If you assume that you can replace this uh, empty list here in the tail with an actual variable in order to make an open list, right? Assume that this were uh, uh, this were A and this was B. Now, in order to append these two lists, right? All you need to do is to unify A with uh, L2. Right? What happens if you unify A with L2? A becomes L2, right? And uh, A now is 4, 5, 6 uh, bar B with the tail B. So L1, the, the result of appending L1 and L2 will become 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So with a single unification of uh, the tail of the list A with the second list L2, we get what we want, right? Just by unifying, we get uh, uh, the list. So the appended list happens to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 with the open tail B. So this is the intuition, right? And uh, this list representation is known as uh, a difference list. So the idea here is very similar. So the list is expected to contain 1, 2, 3, and you are expected to ignore uh, this suffix, right? And similarly, the list is expected to contain 4, 5, 6 here. And you sort of ignore uh, um, the suffix p, and uh, and we can make it more concrete this way. So the uh, difference list is described as uh, some list L1, right? L1 points to the head. There is something. Uh, there are a few elements here, and then there is some suffix here, right? Um, and the list is supposed to contain all the elements that are between uh, the start of L1 and uh, the start of S1. So you should ignore everything that is in the suffix. So this is the same as what we had used for uh, queues. It's the same idea. Because uh, the elements in the list is a difference of the elements in the L1 list, uh, removing elements in the uh, S1 list, we call this implementation a difference list. Actually, what we had used for queues is very similar to a difference list. But here, we make it more concrete. So how do you re-implement append here? So you sort of imagine L1 to start at here, right? L1 is here, S1 is here. So this is the first list. And you want to append L1 and L2. So L2 starts here, right? And S2 is some suffix of the second list, right? S2 is here. And the way you append L1, sorry, the list, uh, the first list and the second list, is by unifying these two variables, right? It's the same as what we had seen earlier. You unify the suffix of the first list with the start of the second list. And what you get is uh, an appended list whose starting point is L3, which is the starting point of the first list, right? And the suffix is actually the suffix of uh, the second list, right? So this appended list is supposed to contain all the elements from L1 Right, this L1, L3 point, all the way up to this S2, S3 point. The observation is that this is just a variable, right? Even though I have uh, written this down as um, a space here, the assumption is this will be just some variable. This will be a list of uh, concrete values. If you unify these two things, they will automatically unify, and this will just be a variable here. So that is what you will get. So. So this is this is basically uh, the idea behind the append of a uh, uh, difference list. So the way we would write this is when appending two difference lists, where the first list starts at L1 and the suffix is S1, and the second list starts at L2, right, L2 here, and the suffix is S2, S2 here, you get a result uh, difference list, which is the 
result of appending the first list and the second list, whose uh, starting will be L3 here, right? And S3, right? S3. And the way we describe this unification is just by writing down the unification here, right? We say uh, S1 unifies with L2 because S1 and L2 point to the same place, right? And L1 unifies with L3. L1 unifies with L3 here. And S2 unifies with S3. S2 unifies with S3 here. Right? And we use the same idea as uh, before, right? If you just have, uh, so all of these, there are no existential variables here, right? All of these variables also appear on the head of the root. So we can push the, um, push these unifications into the head of the rule, right? So that uh, we can convert this rule into a fact. What we are trying to do is we are trying to remove the introduction of L3 and S3, right? And the way we do it is uh, you replace L3 with uh, L1, right? And S3 with uh, S2. And if you do that, you get an append function, right? Actually, up, sorry, append uh, fact, which says given a, um, Difference list with um, and S1 is L2, right? So given a list with uh, L1, L2, that's the first list. L2, S2, which is the second list, you get L1, S2. This is a little bit hard to parse. So if you rename the variables, all you get is uh, this append function where the first list is AB, second list is BC, you get a list which is AC. So this somewhat. Uh, um, sort of fits within the mental framework, right? So the first list starts from A and then suffix is B. The second list starts at the suffix B and goes until the suffix C. And the appended list is basically starting at A and then whose suffix is C, suffix of the second list. Okay, so this is the append fact. So in order to um, better represent uh, these lists, we use uh, a new notation. So one thing to take away, right? So um, is that um, when you get the notations right, when you get the language right, the language actually shapes your thinking. I think this I mentioned this in the first class, right? If you design the data structure right, and the way you write down the data structures right, it actually forces you to think in one direction. Um, and all we are doing by introducing these new notations is uh, um, introducing something that is very familiar that sort of guides you, guides your thinking in one direction, right? And all we are going to do is, uh, instead of writing it as uh, a comma b, two separate variables, we are going to introduce a infix function symbol a minus b, right? And uh, the idea is that uh, a difference list will be represented by this compound term a minus b, right? And the idea is that uh, the difference list starts at a, and its suffix is b, and this minus is sort of indicative that uh, this is a difference list. So the elements of the list is all the elements in A minus the suffix, remove the suffix, so that you uh, you get the elements in that uh, actual list, right? So whenever you see A minus B, you sort of mentally imagine that you are looking at a difference list, right? Where A is actually going to be some list of elements, some concrete elements, right? With the suffix B, and this B is uh, just going to be B. So the elements that are actually in the list are going to be these elements, right? And we sort of ignore uh, the elements that are uh, subtracted here. So if you use this notation, instead of writing a comma b as two separate variables and b comma c as two separate variables, right? If you just replace that with uh, a single compound term, a minus b, the append rule for uh, um, the difference list becomes uh, a minus b, right? Which is the first difference list. B minus C, which is the second difference list. And uh, the appended list is going to be AC, uh, where uh, the new the appended list starts at A, and then it suffixes C. And importantly, the fact that we unify these two is actually captured in the variables. By using the same variable here, we are saying these two uh, things unify, the suffix of the first list and the uh, start of the second list unified. So any questions on this so far? I don't think I, I, we haven't seen any code examples, but we'll come back to code examples later. If you have any questions, you can ask now. We'll do some examples later.
Ah, uh, okay. So you're asking really interesting question, uh, Venkat. So this is the um, I have a bunch of slides on cal calculating the length of such lists. Any other questions? Yeah. So by by making it easy for append, we are actually complicating other things. Um, we will see how to do length. Actually, length will become hilariously interesting. So we'll see what happens there. So here is a quiz, right? So how do you represent an empty difference list? Is it one, two, three, or four? Yeah, three is uh, three is good. Yeah, OK. All of you seem to get the right answer. Uh, I don't know. I would have thought, OK, I could represent empty uh, list as uh, uh, empty list minus empty list. Actually, this is not going to work out great. So which is, which is, it's a leading question, this one. The answer is you represent it with A minus A. And the reason for that is this one, right? So, so the idea is that uh, what happens if you happen to use uh, the notation um, empty list minus empty list rather than A minus A? Both are sort of representing both empty lists. But this is better, right? We'll see why that is better. Um, so consider, uh, so recall that the append is a minus b, comma b minus c is a minus c, right? Consider appending an empty difference list onto some list, right? So as you have all correctly pointed out, uh, I will pick uh, a minus a as the empty list, right? And uh, I'm going to append it with the difference list uh, uh, 1, 2, 3 with the tail c minus c. So the elements that we have are 1, 2, 3. We expect the result to be uh, 1, 2, 3 minus C, right? And uh, the append rule says that uh, we have to unify B and B, these two variables, right? So A gets unified with uh, this term, right? So you replace that term in uh, the result, you get uh, 1, 2, 3 minus C. Hence, the result of uh, the append is what we want here, right? We get 1, 2, 3 minus C. Essentially, this is an empty list. This is some list which has one, two, three. And the result you expect to be the same list, right? So we get the same list here. So if you had picked, uh, say, um, empty difference list, empty difference list as the ones to uh, unify, right? So actually, the ones to represent an empty list. If we had chosen this representation, according to the definition, the fact, right, it says uh, these two variables should unify. B should unify with B. Empty list should unify with um, a non-empty list. I mean, it, it has some structure, but a non-empty list. But an empty list does not unify with a non-empty list, right? So um, this, uh, if you ask this question, prologue would just say false. This is not a this is not a thing that you can append. So it appears that the correct way to encode this is going to be um, a minus a for an empty list. But this encoding can cause uh, problems sometimes. So consider this one, right? Um, consider unifying A minus A right, with a non-empty one. I'm just unifying it. Uh, um, I'm unifying it, right? But the observation is that if you sort of uh, translate this to um, regular lists, this is an empty list. This is a non-empty list, right? And these two things should not unify totally, right? So do we agree that that is the case? I think we can agree. Uh, this is an empty list. This is a non-empty list with one, two, three. So these two things should not unify. These two terms should not unify. But if you apply prologue's unification rules, right? Um, this variable A, right, unifies with this variable B. So you replace every occurrence of B with A. What you get is uh, 1, 2, 3, A minus A, right? And according to this uh, definition, uh, A should unify with uh, 1, 2, 3, A. Yeah, that's uh, Harini is getting to the uh, point. So will this make A infinite? A unifies with B. That's precisely what is happening. Um, so what will happen is uh, A needs to unify with uh, 1, 2, 3, A, which makes uh, this uh, infinite term. 
So A will be the solution for A will be an infinite term. This is because uh, of the problem, right? This is due to the fact that uh, by default, Prolog says uh, I will turn off Fokker's check. Um, but it is better to set uh, set Prolog see the um, you occur set to an error all the time. Uh, as we saw, I mean, this was decisions that was made back in uh, uh, the 70s, right? I, I, at least I haven't come across an example where uh, occur check happens to be expensive, but it is always uh, it always seems like a bad uh, uh, thing to do. Uh, you never want an infinite term um, in practice. So if you set occur check to be an error, this these two terms will not unify. Right, so that's the idea. Um, we can try in this, right? So we can try just to give you some idea. Let me open a terminal. Um, oops. Let me exit full screen. Make it bigger. So I'm asking whether these two terms unify. Um, yeah, it produces an infinite term here, right? And it says it unifies. And this is uh, the fact that it unifies uh, is uh, is wrong, right? According to our uh, definition, these two terms should not unify because this is an empty difference list. This is a difference list that has one, two, three. And because of how we've uh, written down the empty difference list, uh, prologue says, okay, this is fine. It says uh, B happens to be an infinite terms. It's a cyclic term, right? And this is not what we want. Um, so, yep. So, uh, sorry to interrupt. I had a doubt uh, regarding this. Uh, yep. Why is A equal, like, why do we unify A with B first? Why can't we unify A with 1, 2, 3, B and then unify B with 1, 2, 3, B? Um, what happens then? So if you unify A with 1, 2, 3, B, uh, A becomes 1, 2, 3, B, right? And uh, this becomes 1, 2, 3, B. And you have the same problem, right? So uh, this is 1, 2, 3, B. And this is uh, this is going to be B. So these two terms must unify. Sir, the problem is the same. But uh, how do we decide the order in which? Actually, actually it doesn't matter, right? So it, it, uh, it really doesn't matter. Equality is uh, reflexive. Um, so you can you can read it as uh, both ways. I just happen to explain it that way because uh, it is nicer. But, oh, okay, okay. Right. So, I mean, think about it. Right. So, equality is reflexive. So, if you happen to unify A with the first term, then you replace all occurrences away with that term. So this becomes one two three B. This becomes one two three B. Right. And you have to unify one two three B with B. Okay. And which is what which is what you have here. So. Yeah, OK, good question. Um, I might choose a particular order to unify, but there is no order. Um, the question you are asking is uh, sort of tied to, I mean, this is sort of just an observation. It's OK if you don't get it. So observe that uh, when we wrote the MGO algorithm right, uh, for compound terms, I sort of wrote down um, just a fold. I didn't mention fold L, fold R. Right. So uh, the important reason is that uh, it doesn't matter in which order you actually do the unification. So you will end up with the same result. I'm not giving you a proof, but uh, uh, but you can you can sort of uh, work it out. You can work out a proof sketch that uh, it doesn't matter in which way you unify because uh, equality is reflexive. Anyway, that's uh, that's something for uh, another time. OK, so. Let's uh, move on. OK, so this comes to Venkat's uh, question earlier, right? How do we compute the length of a difference list? Right, so, so let's, let's write down the procedure for that, right? So length of an ordinary list. So this is a length of ordinary list. So we write uh, len of uh, empty list is 0, len of uh, a list with head h and tail t is n. If the length of the tail is m and n is n, n is m plus 1, right? We might try to write down, write down the length of a difference list uh, using the same structure, right? Um, because we chose uh, a minus a as the uh, implementation for uh, an empty difference list, we will write uh, len, of a oops, len of a minus a is 0. 
right? With this corresponds to this one. And uh, then definition, yeah. I don't know how Harini is sort of uh, stepping ahead uh, multiple uh, uh, multiple steps ahead of me, but uh, that's precisely the answer, Harini. So it will lead to um, several results. Let me get to that. There is no the observation is uh, it's it's quite um, there is no one satisfying answer. That's the giveaway. But let's see how we get to that for the benefit of others. Um, yeah, we are not using head here, so I am dropping the head. So some head tail and the suffix is T1, right? If the length is to be shown as n, then show me that uh, T minus T1 is m, right? And n is m plus 1. It's the same as uh, what I've written down. Just translated that to uh, the notion of uh, difference lists, right? Um, so OK, so I think. Uh, um, a direct quest to lead to the next one. It's a leading question. So what is the length of uh, this uh, um, list? So I have 1, 2, 3, A minus A, and B is the length. So what is the length? Assume that Akash check is off. Yeah. Harini has got it. Um, so one and three. We'll see how we get uh, one and three. So actually, it's um, yeah. This is quite unsatisfying, but it's also interesting how we get here. So let's see what happens, right? So the answer is you can get uh, both of these as answers. Um, so the first thing you want to do is to see um, this length of uh, Length query, right? Let me try to run it in uh, the SWA prolog interpreter so that we can see what happens. Um, oops. Okay, so I'm going to write down the definition of length that's there, and then I'm going to ask the query. Um, this one. And let me turn tracing on. Right. So, and then I ask the query this. So I just copied the length uh, definition and I turn tracing on and I'm asking the length of uh, this query. I'm going to step through just to show that uh, we get both of these results. So what happens first, right? So first, so the thing to notice here is occur check is off. Okay. So, um, so with that, uh, the first thing that the prologue does is just renames the variables and then says, OK, I'm going to try to satisfy this goal. Right? It just renamed the variables here. Nothing else has happened. And it's going to pick one of the um, heads of the rules to unify with. right? And observe that uh, because the occur check is off, this term here, right? as we saw earlier, will unify with uh, this term here. This is the same as what we have here. right? So what is going to happen is uh, it's going to say, OK, this is an infinite list with 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and so on. right? But we said uh, even though A is an infinite term, um, A minus A, we said uh, that's going to be 0. right? Length of that is going to be 0. So that is what we get here. And uh, Prolog says, I have successfully unified these two things. So the length of this list is going to be 0. right? It's going to come back. Right, and it stopped. Right, um, the first thing that it produced, just to complete the argument, is uh, a is an infinite term, right? And this infinite term has length zero. This is wrong, but uh, it is also stopping here, which means it is going to produce more interesting answers. So let's continue. Now, what has happened is uh, um, it, there was a choice point, right? We went on the first path. We can also go down the second path. So it's going to retry this call again, and it's going to unify with uh, this term, right? So it's going to drop the head. It's going to drop one, and then the list is going to become two, three, some a minus a, right? 
And uh, the result is going to be what? It's going to compute 0 here and 0 plus 1, 1. Right? That is what will come back. If you step through, the call happens to be 2, 3, some variable minus that same variable is some length. And this one again unifies with uh, this term here. Right? And 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 3 infinite list is computed to be length 0. And that is going to come back here. Right? And you're going to go to the second uh, uh, sub goal where you plug in 0 for m. And then n is going to be 1. Right? And it says, uh, oh, some value that I interested in is uh, 0 plus 1. And 1 is 0 plus 1. And it says, OK, so the list that you gave me, the original list, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, infinite list is going to have length 1. Right? And it again says there is an option. Of course, there is. So you can keep doing this. right? And it says it will come up with one more answer where it says the infinite list 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 as length 0. So we are two levels down. If, we come, if you come two levels down, then the uh, length of the original query is going to be returned as 2. Right? So that's what we'll see here. This is, uh, it computes uh, 0 plus 1 is 1, um, and then continues, right? And computes 2 is 1 plus 1. And it says, OK, I've successfully computed uh, the length of the list to be 2, right? Again, this is not uh, what we wanted. Um, but we can continue again, right? And we can keep redoing this. And the observation is that uh, this keeps going, right? And you get 3. And you can still keep going, because there is still a uh, choice point. Every time you unify, there's always a choice point. So you end up with uh, uh, more and more values. So, so it produces some other values here, and then says length is 4 and so on. I mean, this keeps on going infinitely. Um, and exit this one. Yeah, so the. So yeah, that's the reason for uh, getting 0 first. But we also get 3, as we saw, right? As we step through, because there was a choice point, we get 3. And the problem, the core of the problem is that um, um, we let uh, this term, right? terms that looks like this unify with uh, a minus a, right? Um, so you can naively try to replace that uh, uh, a minus a with uh, mt minus mt. If you do this, uh, the problem is that uh, um, let's see what happens. I think rather than me explaining it, uh, let me try to run this. So all I've done between the original um, definition of len here, that is it. Oops, maybe I draw the word. Yeah, len here. And the len that we are going to see is I'm replacing a minus a with mt minus mt. Can someone tell me what will happen when I replace this with uh, mt minus mt? And the answer is just below, but uh, I'm curious what uh, you will work through. So let's try this. Um, I need to exit out of full screen and then switch over. So I am using the second definition here. I call it len2. Right? And I asked the query that I asked earlier. Right? So I'm not tracing. Uh, okay. yes. So it says uh, A is empty, B is 3. right? But the problem is that uh, A has been unified with uh, a has been unified with uh, um, a concrete list, right? The, we get the correct length. 3 is the correct length, which is what we want. But because A has been unified with uh, a concrete uh, suffix, we can no longer use, uh, um, we lose the interesting property of uh, being open in the suffix, right? We can no longer append it, and we can no longer do any interesting operation. So if you keep doing other operations, if you want to do other operations here, if you call a length query, length is supposed to be a purely functional operation, right? It's a pure operation because uh, we are just examining. We are not actually doing any right. But because of the way we've unified that with uh, 
um, MTMT, we pretend that unification is uh, update. So uh, unfortunately, what we've uh, uh, incidentally done is by querying for length, we've actually unified a variable that we shouldn't. And A happens to be unified with an empty list that prevents extensibility, even though we get the correct length tree. There are, of course, infinite number of other answers here. I'm going to uh, not consider that. They produced me one answer. That is what I wanted. But it broke this nice property of uh, being extensible. This is not, a, not what I want. right? So of course, we know that uh, this is not a good representation for uh, an empty list. So that was just a straw man example. Right? And the uh, right way to do this is to turn on uh, a curse check. Right? So earlier, we've seen one way of doing uh, turning on a curse check by setting this global flag, right? Set prolog flag, a check is true. But you can also do it uh, another way in prolog where you only uh, do unification with a check, right? So here is length three. The only difference between this and the previous one is rather than writing a minus a comma zero as a fact, I write uh, a minus a one, right? And I say unify these two variables with Tucker's check. So what I'm telling Prolog here is uh, don't unify these two variables. If one variable happens to occur in the um, body of the other uh, term, right? One term occurs in the body of the other term. So the same way um, I'm asking, I'm asking Prolog to check that uh, whatever you get for A1 does not occur in the body of A. So this is a way of doing it's not a global hammer. It is sort of uh, an intelligent equality, where equality with Tucker's check is what uh, uh, this uh, this thing is going to do. And if you if you do that, uh, you get the right answer. So let's just uh, for the sake of completeness again uh, write this. So let me write this out, right, and then ask the query. So if you do this, you get three. Importantly, the difference between this answer and this answer is that we don't get a unification for A, which is not what we want, right? We don't want to unify A. We want to leave A as a, um, a variable which is not unified so that we preserve the openness property. We're just asking for a length of a list. So there is no reason to unify A. And uh, this is really what we want. If you continue, you'll get uh, uh, an infinite loop. You can you can check why that is the case, but I'm going to press dot and uh, um, terminate uh, this query. Okay, so this is so the high level takeaway is that uh, um, a check is really what you want in most places, right? And um, and and uh, be aware of uh, what a uh, check does to your program. Um, if you don't have a check, then strange things can happen. And if you have a check on, then mostly it works well. Right? So that's uh, that's really what we want. Okay, so that's all we wanted to say about uh, difference lists. Any questions on this one while I open the next lecture? OK, so if there are no questions, let me uh, continue with this uh, next lecture. So the idea here is uh, we are going to see idioms of uh, prologue. Um, right? So again, difference list and uh, mutable data structure is just an idiom. right? So we, we are not uh, introducing new prologue features. We are sort of playing around with uh, what can you encode with uh, the existing features of prologue which sort of fits a pattern, right? And uh, this open list is one such pattern. Uh, generate and test is uh, one more pattern, right? It's a programming pattern. It's a programming idiom in uh, Prolog, where uh, it's, a, it's a surprisingly effective way of uh, um, solving certain problems, right? As the name suggests, you're going to generate some solutions, and you're going to test for whether that satisfied some of the conditions that you wanted. So we'll see what uh, um, what this uh, idea is about with lots of examples. I think you'll like those examples. Uh, 
Um, yeah, okay. I, I mentioned this earlier. So in order to um, generate, so we are going to see um, one list function. Okay, so we are going to call this uh, predicate take. So the idea is predicate take has uh, uh, an arity three, it takes three arguments, right? Um, the first argument is a list which has an element x. The second argument is an x. The third argument is going to be um, the same list as the first one without uh, this element x. So that's why I sort of use this uh, um, sort of illustrative name. So it's a list that has x. Second one is x. And the third one is list that doesn't have x. So the stake predicate holds for all such lists. OK. So, so the idea is that uh, um, you have a list with x. You're taking out x. If you take out x, the list that you end up with is uh, this list and no x. OK, so these two are lists. This is just a variable. Uh, this is quite useful, as you will see. Right? So let's see how we um, implement this. So we write a recursive procedure. So if you, you can only take uh, elements from uh, uh, non-empty lists. OK, so that is, uh, that is the first uh, assumption that we make. So this predicate does not hold on empty lists, because you cannot take uh, an x out of an empty list. So this list has to have x. So the first thing we say is, uh, if the list has a head h and a tail t, you can take out the head, right? And what you'll be left with is the tail. So that is removing the first element and giving you the tail. So that is one way of doing it. Of course, you have other elements that you can also take out. So we write this as a, that as a recursive procedure. Assume that the list has a head h and tail t, right? And assume that the element that you take out is r. So I take out some element r, right? You end up with a list that has a, a head h and tail s. The idea is that you're not taking out the tail. You're taking out some element from uh, the tail, right? And you end up with s. And that is precisely what this uh, recursive query says. So if I take out r from t, I get s. So if you can show that you can take out r from t and get s, then you can also show that uh, in a list with head h and tail t, if you take out r, because we know r is part of t, you get a list with the head h and tail s. So this is sort of a recursive procedure that uh, helps us take elements out of uh, the tail of the list. OK. This is quite powerful, actually. Um, let me clear my cells so that uh, I don't give away the answers. OK. So that's uh, the take clause. So now, uh, this is quite nice. So you can say, uh, if I if I give the list 1, 2, 3, and I take out 1, what will you be left with? Y will be 2, 3, right? That is the list that uh, um, you get by removing 1 from it. You can also um, try to take out, you can ask, right? If I take out the element 1 from list 2, 3, what do I get? This predicate does not hold, right? Because you cannot take one from the list two, three. That is not satisfied. The beautiful thing that you can do with this is uh, um, I can have the list one, two, three, one, right? And I can say, give me all the results for x and y, which uh, gives you all of this. It says, if you take out one, you get two, three, one. This one is the first element. If you take out two, you get one, three, one. If you take out three, you get uh, one, two, one. If you take out one, the last one, um, you get one, two, three, right? So you generate all of these results. So this is quite nice. Um, in particular, this is beautiful because uh, you can use the take procedure to generate uh, permutations of uh, the given list very nicely in a very declarative fashion. So given an empty list, the permutation of the list is the empty list, right? So there is no elements to permute. So given a list L, right? The permutation of this list is going to be uh, the list with head h and tail t with the idea that you you take this original l right 
take out some element h right and you get r so you've taken out this element h you get r right and uh, r happens to be uh, sorry t happens to be a permutation of r you can read it both ways but uh, t happens to be a permutation of r is the usual um, reading of this you take r and you permit it you get t right so we are basically dividing this into a sub problem right we are saying you can take out any element here h and you 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 basically get a list without h from l right you permute r you get several results there and you basically take that uh, h and uh, cons it on front of t right and the reason why this generate lots of results is uh, as we saw earlier right this particular query has multiple results one for each of uh, the positions where uh, uh, sorry one for each of uh, the h that you can take out right and this also has lots of results because this permutes the um, sublists and uh, yeah so that's the definition and uh, and yeah so you can you can you can see that uh, if you permute uh, 1 2 3 you get all the permutations right all we do is we take out h and uh, you can that element can be the first element and you can permute the tail as well okay so this is a nice way of generating permutations very easily right um with this tail so this is this permutation is going to serve as uh, uh, the key for our uh, generation right if you want to check a certain property uh, what we are going to do is to generate all the permutations and check whether uh, one of the permutations has the property that we want to satisfy so that is the idea of generate generate and test okay so it's a design pattern for logic programming so the idea is to generate a candidate solution right using permutation so you permute your given list to generate one candidate solution and you test whether whether that solution satisfies the condition this looks sort of uh, not a great thing to do but there are certain problems where uh, um, this sort of uh, permutation and uh, checking is uh, um, perhaps the most straightforward way of uh, implementing the solution right so uh, that is the idea of generate and test what we will see is we will see a bunch of examples with uh, generate and test um, in the next lecture so i'll stop here any questions on this so far can we modify the previous program to continue removing if the head has matched so that we can remove more than one oh yeah yeah you can you can certainly um, do that i mean i can't um, give you the tell you the program but certainly you can you can write the program so you want to uh, also generate the smaller lists right is that what you want to do uh, rather than just permutations you also want uh, say the results to be 1 2 2 1 and so on is that what you are looking for sir that no i am expecting an answer yes or no this one so take is uh, yeah take is taking one element right and then always uh, yeah i think you can change this easily right so we take that element out and we always put that element back here we want to take uh, more than one element uh, um you drop this uh, you you have this but you also drop you you have a rule which also drops the head um certainly possible give it a try i don't think it's uh, it's a difficult uh, um, program to write but it's a good question so you you get uh, you get uh, multiple answers um, you have to think about um, you have to think about what the interface will be right here we only represent uh, take clause is represented as taking one element out you have to think about um, what that um, what the arguments will be what is the second argument going to be try it out i think it's a interesting problem to write okay so i'll stop here
and then we'll continue in the next uh, next class